month and we've been introducing you to young people in South Africa doing extraordinary things. Tonight we're joined by a young musician Nia Motsatse as she's a 19 year old violinist who plays classical, popular, gypsy and uh, South African pieces. She's already toured nationally and internationally and she is the two time winner of the Standard Bank Ovation Award at the National Arts Festival. Nia, a complete pleasure to have you in studio <laughs> with us. Thank you for Thank having you me. Thank you for being here. <laughs> So, so the violin is notoriously difficult. <laughs> Everybody knows that. It's the hardest um, instrument to play. So, so tell me how you found the violin. Um, well, when I was six years old, my dad took uh, me and my family to a, uh, a concert, a classical concert. And if you've ever seen an orchestra performing, all the violins are on one side. And I was just so entranced by them playing all together I just decided that that is the instrument for me yeah so literally a week later I was in lessons and the rest is history <laughs> so so that's lovely your parents encouraged you yes. as, as a young because yes. you have to start pretty young yes. to, to yes. become a maestro in, in <laughs> effect yes I started at six so it was important for me to start at a young age they did want me to do something extra apart from school we didn't know what it was at the time but then when I yeah. saw the violin I was like well that's it <laughs> and, and how many hours so so you're a young girl yes how many hours are, are you putting in every day look when I was younger obviously it was a lot smaller because I had a you know a smaller brain capacity but it started with 30 minutes in an hour but now I'm up to like three four hours a day sometimes more when I'm preparing for a concert like right now yeah um, I'm preparing actually to go to the National Arts Festival again um, to perform there at the arena so now my practice hours are like way up <laughs> okay. so you spend half your life practicing <laughs> essentially the essentially and, and you know violence sometimes they're old um, I don't know how many have you gone through is is this one special or, or just one along the way <laughs> um, I've actually had a few I think I've had maybe four or five in total because um, you have to remember you go through different sizes with the violin so yeah. I had a smaller size and now I'm up to a full size so I've had a I've had a few few special violins. So, so you're talking about the National Arts Festival yes. I think last time um, you did letters to with a master Sulu. Yes I did. So, so how do you use a violin to mm -hmm. remember someone known as a political activist a, a struggle hero mm. uh, how do you do that? Um, I actually think that was the entire point of memory of remembering Master Sulu. It was using the violin and classical music um, and African music to remember her and celebrate her. Mm. Um, it was her 100th birthday, so that was something that was really important to us because we love remembering and celebrating women in history that have made a huge impact. So last year it was uh, Mama Albertina Sosulu and this year it's actually Mama Dorothy Masuka that I'll be doing um, Seasons, um, Dorothy Masuka songbook in the style of Vivaldi. So that's going to be me this year, the 1st to the 3rd of July in the National Arts Festival. So, so explain that because Vivaldi, the Four Seasons, uh, <laughs> a Baroque piece from centuries ago, so, so it's different. Seasons it is, is different. It is. Um, Vivaldi is actually my favorite classical musician. And um, I thought it would be such a good idea to combine the two people because they're just very important to me. Um, unfortunately, this year, Mama Dorothy Masuka passed away. I had been wanting to meet with her to have a conversation with her so that I can, you know, get her input on the songbook, on this very important day of mine. But unfortunately, she passed. And yeah. in fact, she passed on my birthday. Oh, wow. Sure. <laughs> so um, it was very important to merge these two styles to show people that you can do it. Classical music doesn't only have to be its own little segregated um, area. You can combine it with other types of beautiful music like Mama Dorothy Masuka's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you're funky. You're, you're not the <laughs> traditional classical stuffy musician. I, I guess that, <laughs> that cliche is, is gone in a way. Um, look, I wouldn't say that it's gone. Um, I, I do think it's important to evolve. Um, and, and I think that I've tried to do that. I will always be a classical musician 100%, but I love incorporating other types of music that I enjoy as well because I, I think that it makes such a beautiful union together and everyone gets a chance to enjoy it. It's not mm. just classical enthusiasts or just African enthusiasts. It's, it's, it's something for everyone. Well, 
they, they're different theories about art. Uh, you know, should we do art for art's sake or should it always have a message? Uh, you, you said you love paying tribute to these mm. women who've inspired you. Mm. Uh, where do you think uh, the, the role of art, maybe classical music, does it have any special significance mm. in, in South Africa, given, given what we're facing? Look, personally, I do feel like in everything that we do, there has to be a message in, involved. Um, with every single concert that I've had, there's been a message. I, I had a concert that said that had a theme, make things happen, which means that you need to do more, you need to do things. And I've always loved to have a message with all of my concerts so that there's also an educational point to it. Um, I think it's, it's very important also for the youth because I am 19. Mm. So I do want to get the youth involved, although I am a classical musician. It is important for me, um, for them to learn in the process as well, not just to see beautiful music or experience a beautiful show, but to also learn in the process. I yeah. think that is very important with all types of arts, not just music. So, so I think you promised us a, a rendition of, <laughs> of something. Yes. Uh, we, we, I'm going to stand back okay. and I'll come and chat to you again. Okay. Uh, but as soon as that, that music starts playing okay. and, and your violin will be completely live, <laughs> okay. uh, please uh, join in with that. Okay. Satsé violinist playing. Tell me about the piece. Um, well, the piece is actually called We Shall Overcome. It's actually one of the pieces that I performed last year 
at the National Arts Festival um, with Remembering Masa Sulu. Yeah. And that Beautiful. piece, <laughs> thank you so much. And that piece is so important because it just reminds us, especially now with Youth Month and, and Youth Day being yesterday, that no matter what happens, you can always just pull through and you yeah. can overcome anything. And, and you don't seem to get nervous. You're, you're 19. So are, you just, <laughs> are you just used to the pressure of, of performing? Is it, is that's, it experience? That's actually not true. I still get nervous to this day. I mean, I was, no, I was nervous before I came out here. Um, you don't show it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. But I think with every performance it does get easier but the nerves are still there it helps you keep you on your toes yeah, so I prefer it yes I prefer it <laughs> okay so you, you're at the National Arts Festival yes and and then after that what are what are your plans if people want to follow you and, and see you live um, well musically I'm actually going to be working on my diploma with Royal Schools and I'll be having a concert in October um, and December. I have an annual concert actually that I have every year called Neo Mutsatsu, the concert in December. So this Which year has will actually be... been happening since you were 10 years yes. old. Yes. <laughs> so this concert... How did that happen? Just, just um, take us through and what, what you're going to do this year as well. Um, well, uh, I started performing home concerts at the age of nine. The reason for that is because I was, I had a fear of the stage like I couldn't perform on stage without getting really terrified and I would forget my notes and, mm. and it was just terrible so my parents were like you can't be a musician if you can't play on stage so they um, made home concerts for me when I was nine and by the age I was 10 I felt ready enough to actually do a real concert in a real venue with a larger audience not just you know friends and family so from that day, I think we went to the Johannesburg Country Club. That was the first concert ever. Yeah. Me with a professional string quartet and a pianist and 150 people um, showed up as my audience. And it was one of the best moments ever. Cool. So that was in 2010 and it's been going on every year up until now. So And, and you've been to the Linda Auditorium as well. Yes, I was there um, last year. And that was actually a very big milestone for me because... It was something that I wanted to accomplish at a very young age because the Lind Auditorium is one of the best places to go for um, to go see the JPO, which was the orchestra that I saw that made me want to play. So it's a very big auditorium and I was like, I want to fill that venue, I want to play there. Mm. So it was a really great concert. I loved it very much and, and, and yeah, I'll always remember it. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. So, Thank so you. October, December, where, where are those concerts being held? Um, well, in December, Neomuts after the concert, we actually still need to find out all the details, but you can follow me on Facebook, Neomuts Atze, to get all the details of all my concerts, all my upcoming concerts and events, okay. if you want to. And, and what's the future? What does the future hold for now? Um, well, like I said, I will be studying music. I'm going to get my um, diploma with Royal Schools. And I will be performing anywhere and everywhere, trust me, for as much as I can. Music is not going anywhere, and I'll yeah. be performing for as long as I can. <laughs> uh, and look, we're celebrating Youth Month. Uh, we're talking about the State of the Nation Address. Many young people don't have jobs, uh, a feeling of hopelessness. Yeah. I don't know, do you have anything to impart to them? Obviously, you're following your, your passion. Yeah. Um, many would say this is not practical, yeah. but you are making it it work. Yeah. Um, look, I think it's very important one to just figure yourself out. I think the problem that people have is that they just they go through the motions without actually thinking about what they're doing. They need to find their passion and be sure about who they are and what they want to do. And then from then on, then they can build connections that can help them get to the places that they want to get to. Mm. So you don't always have to just like go through life just living you really just need to sit down and think about it and be sure about what you want so <laughs> sorry find out who you are yes find out who you are and that's the only way that you'll be able to find out what you really want instead of what other people want you to be I think that's what um, a lot of youth gets trapped in sometimes and they just feel as though there's no way out or they don't have any other options but there always is another option you can be better if you just focus on yourself, find out what you want, and just take it from there. Well, thank you. We're <laughs> honored to have you here today. Thank and, you and so to much. And to perform for us as thank well. Thank you. A little musical interlude uh, with 19-year-old violinist Neo Motsatsi, and she said you can find her easily on social media. We take a short break. I'll be